Hi, I'm Lisa Niven Kelly, and today I'm going to show you how to coil wire on a drill. This is a really fun technique. So why would you want to coil on a drill? Well, if you've watched my coiling by hand class, when you coil by hand, which you need to do for certain designs, you have to have the wire come up and over the core wire with every turn. So you have to work with a certain length of wire. You can't have it like on a spool and have the spool come up and over every single time. Now, if you want to coil on a drill, the dynamics work a little differently. There's a core wire in the drill and that spins. So your coiling wire can just feed up. So you can have it in a large coil on your lap or in a, on a spool. But the benefit to that is you can do it fast and you can do a really long length, pretty much as long as you know your core wire is, maybe a foot or so is controllable. Then from there, you can cut it up and use it in different designs. So for me, I use a lot of coil in my designs. Like in this bracelet, I've coiled a long coil, I've cut it up, and then used small segments, just treated those little coils as beads and incorporated them that way. In this ring, I've done the same thing. I've built a long coil, cut it into these smaller sizes, and then stitched up this ring. These bracelets, same thing. Maybe it looks like I coiled directly onto these wires, but I didn't, that takes a long time. I built a long coil, pulled it off, cut them up into smaller segments and used them, strung them right on just like beads. So let me show you how to do this now. To coil wire on a drill, here's the tools and materials that we're gonna need. Let's go ahead and grab a drill, that would be useful. I'm gonna use this ring clamp to help to guide my wire, my coiling wire as I coil it. A nice pointed flush cutter is great for trimming that coil off. Nylon jaw pliers if you need to harden your core wire or maybe straighten your coiling wire. And then I've got a nice hardened wire here for my core wire that's hard and straight and some coiling wire. In this case, I've got 24 gauge sterling wire here to coil with. That's a great gauge to practice with. And this core wire is about a millimeter thick. Let's first talk about different types of drills. In today's class, I'm gonna be using this basic old cordless drill, but maybe you have something different at home. So what I've got here is just a Craftsman drill from Home Depot. It's pretty easy to find, pretty inexpensive. Variable speed, I'll talk about that in a minute. I've got a Dremel tool and also a flex shaft. So let me talk about these independently. Now what I like about this drill is that it's got the chuck here, it's variable speed, it's cordless, which doesn't really matter, but that's kind of nice. And what you're looking for here in this chuck, it's got some jaws inside and they're gonna clamp down on your core wire. So as I hold this still and turn this, I'm actually opening it that way, and by turning, 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 do you see those three jaws coming together? Those will grasp onto my core wire. I can use it from there. So that's how a chuck works with the jaws. A flex shaft works similar to a drill in that it too has the chuck here with the three prongs. And you would open and close that with your key that comes with your flex shaft. This works with a pedal, a variable speed pedal that you can slowly turn on and it can go faster and faster from there. I've got here a couple of Dremel cordless tools, and this is the one that I use mostly. This is a nice little compact one as well. But on this guy, I like this because it's cordless, it's small, it's pretty powerful. So I throw this in my toolbox and I use it when coiling in, uh, in class. And it's got a variable speed here, which is nice. But to change or to actually insert your core wire here, it's a little different than it is on a drill. It actually has a collet inside. So you can see if I just try to turn this, it spins away, but I need to remove this to change my collet. So I'm gonna press the button which locks it in place so that I can unscrew this, oops, wrong way. And where the drill has those jaws in its um, chuck there, this actually has a collet in there that you can swap out. This one's pretty small, so it would clamp onto a nice small core wire, but if I had a thicker one, I would need to change this collet to a larger one to grasp onto it. And then again here, to close it back up, I need to 
push this button to lock it and spin it back down. And you'll see these guys pinching together as I spin it down. It would clamp on your core wire there. I want to talk a little bit more about the core wires. So the core wire is a wire that goes into your drill. The coiling wire will be the wire that is wound around the core wire. I like to use a nice hard wire for this so that I can coil on it and maybe pull it off that hard wire and then use it in my piece. If you need to coil directly onto the core wire, you can use a sterling piece of wire or whichever wire you're working with. But the good rule of thumb is to make sure that your coiling wire is thinner than your core wire. So this is 18 gauge. If I was coiling on top of it, I would coil a 20 gauge or thinner. In today's class, we're gonna be coiling 24 gauge, which is nice and thin. It's a good one to practice this technique with. And we're gonna coil right on top of this hard core wire here. Now this guy here, don't be confused, it is copper colored, but it's actually a welding rod. It's just dipped in copper for some brilliant welding reason that I have no idea about. But why I like it is because it's super stiff, so it's really hard. So it's gonna be hard for me to bend it up and distort it while I'm coiling on it. So I use this as my core wire. If you need to use a piece of sterling, you could straighten it a bunch with your nylon jaw pliers to kind of try to harden it up a little bit because you want this core wire to be pretty stiff. So other things you could use this core wire could be um, maybe like a plastic dowel or piano wire is really hard. Don't ever coil on wood because your coiling wire will bind to it. To insert my core wire, I'm gonna get it right in between these three jaws and tighten it up. On this drill, to open and close the jaws, I just turn this guy here. See them coming together. So I'm gonna to bring them down a little bit, grab my core wire, and I insert about a half inch. If you let it go, it'll go in too far. I don't need it in that far. And this is the tricky part, is holding it there and then turning this at the same time. I'm trying to get my fingers out of the way so you can see it here. But you want it to clamp down with it in the center. If by chance you clamp down on your core wire and it's slightly up on one of the jaws, like here's what not to do, like that, do you see that? Your core wire will, will spin really wobbly and you won't be able to coil on it. So get it right in between, tighten it down. Let me get my hand out of the way so you can see that. Give it a nice little final tight. You can see it's perfectly centered. So once you have your core wire in there, just turn the drill on to make sure that it's spinning straight. And that looks great. Let me show you what it looks like if it's a little bit off. Again, here's what not to do. I'm gonna test it. Wonky wobbly, not so good. So let's straighten it back out. That's great. So this drill has a forward and backwards button. That way goes one way, that goes the other. I have it set so that the drill rotates away from me because I like the wire to feed up on this side rather than the back side. So the way I insert my coiling wire is I'm gonna give it about a half inch bend right here and then you, chuck, you tuck it into one of the open jaws on the chuck. So because my core wire is quite a bit thicker than my coiling wire in this case, I'm gonna find, let me turn it for you, I'm gonna find one of these openings. There's usually one that's wider than the other. That one looks, here, let me get it. That one looks good. And I'm gonna tuck it right into the tool like that. That's gonna anchor my coiling wire so that it will spin with this, but it will hold on to it. If it slips out, you'll find you're ho holding your coiling wire like this, but nothing's happening. There's no coiling. So just toss it back in there, okay? So now, 
I'm going to turn on my drill. It's going to turn away from me. It's going to start to coil my wire onto the core wire. It's very exciting. I'm going to let, let it go a little bit and then I'm going to show you some tricks on how to control it. Now see how this is slipping out right there? That's going to make me crazy and it is showing me that my bend is not big enough. So maybe I'll go a little better or a little bigger and this is going to depend on the length of the chuck on your tool. Okay, ready? Here we go. I'm going to start slow. Remember this is a variable speed drill and that's what you want. Otherwise you're going to turn it on and it's going to go really fast and it's going to be really scary. <laughs> so nice and slow. You see the coil start to form there. Now I can go faster as well. But let me show you a trick here on how to feed it up. So you notice I'm bracing my core wire with my pointer finger and my thumb is sort of helping it guide up. Now a coil wire should not come up straight. If you think about the dynamics of a coil, they're actually right next to each other at a slight angle. If I let this coil up totally straight, it would just go right on top of itself. So it's coming at a little bit of an angle. My finger is bracing it, my thumb is helping it guide up a little bit, but I'm not hiding the coil with my thumb so that I can't see any kinks or something that might be coming up and surprising me. So let me just let it keep going. You'll also notice that I'm not giving it like the death grip with my fingers. That's not necessary. This is just nice and light, but being aware of how well you're guiding it up. Now before I show you the ultimate trick, I want to show you a couple problem solving things. If you guide your wire up from too much of a drastic angle like this, you'll get gaps. Okay, so because this is 24 gauge, you might be able to cheat a little bit and just squeeze it in. But if you need to undo it, let me show you how to do that. But first let me show you another mistake that happens. If you're coiling it in from the side, it's going to go on top of itself. So depending on how hard your core wire is, you can click your drill into reverse and turn it the other way as you sort of slowly pull it out. Sometimes though, you literally have to come in and uncoil it like this. Sometimes just putting it in reverse doesn't do it. If you do, do need to do some turning and uncoiling it like that, try to pull it off as straight as possible. You might need to come in with your nylon jaw pliers and straighten up that wire and then start again. Now I need to be aware of the fact that a little kink is coming up and try to guide that into place. Nice and slow and there we go, we're back on track. So once you have a little bit of your coil developed, you can use the ring clamp. Here it is here, to hold and guide the wire. And this is pretty awesome. So I'm gonna come in with the flat side up and I'm gonna go right up against the coil. I'm not way down here, but right up against it. Clamp it with the clamp. So now I've got the wedge and I'm gonna put it down in the back, right down in here. And not too hard, but enough that it's not gonna come out. So as long as you have this all set up correctly, this ring clamp will guide your wire on. So once I start coiling, it just guides it right in there. How awesome is that? So you do need to keep watching though. My co coiling wire is coming up, which is great. It's coming in from the front, and this way I can see if any weird kinks or anything are coming up. It's feeding up through the ring clamp. I don't have it on too tight. If you have it on too tight, it will have a hard time coiling, but not so loose that it's gonna fall off. And notice my left hand back here is just sort of keeping it in place. I'm not giving it more of a squeeze. See my fingernails turning white there. That's too much. Just relax. You're just holding it so, you know, you're bracing it here. And once you have that ring clamp on, you can really start cranking. Now I'm almost to the end. I'm gonna slow down as I get to the end. And I'm gonna stop here. 
Now if I were to undo everything to remove my coil, it's going to do this little flippy thing backwards because there's a lot of tension in here right now. So before you remove anything, put your drill in reverse and give it a couple of turns, maybe five or six turns, and it will pull that tension out. And now I can just slip it right off. I've got my coil just like this. One thing to be aware of, if you had a hard time slipping it off of your core wire, it means the end of your core wire wasn't cut properly and it might get stuck on it. Don't try to pull it right off over it because it'll pull your coil apart. Just file the end of your core wire to have a smooth slide off. But now we've got this nice coil and I'm going to show you how to trim the ends. cut your coiling wire off of your coil, I want to show you a couple tricks. It's really nice to have a very pointed flush cutter like this Tronix cutter here. Now normally people would just come on and trim it like that, but look what it does. It leaves this little pokey part. See that little pokey part? That's no good. So what you want to do is get the tip of your cutter and go right into the coil and cut it where it's already coiling so that when you snip that last coil there, it's super flush and not pokey. If by chance you don't have a ring clamp and you end up doing the whole coil by just holding it with your hand, that's totally fine. But if you're doing a coil where you're using a certain length of wire, like this one, you can see the tail down here, just keep an eye on it because as you finish this coil and that tail comes up between your thumb and your fingers here, ow, major pain. So as it comes up, slow down and then just sort of give up on that last inch. You don't need to coil it. You don't need to run the risk of it getting caught in your thumb. And remember that little fling I was telling you about, if you forget to put it in reverse and you let go, it does that. I'm sure you couldn't really see it on camera, but you may have heard it. So remember when you're finished, kick it into reverse, take a little of the tension out and then let go. One more tip for you. If your coiling wire and your core wire are closer together in gauge, like your core wire might be 18 gauge and this might be 20, you might not find a nice big gap in the jaws of your chuck here to insert that coiling wire to anchor it. If that's the case, you're going to need to open the chuck and sort of insert them in together so that the chuck clamps down on both of them and then turn it to the side and start coiling from there. 